Hey girl, hey. Hey. Hey, we want to welcome everybody to another special edition quarantine Zoom. I am Misty. I am Diambe. I'm Lexi. <laughs> this is an exciting one because Diambe like popped into the country. She's been basically on exile in the Bahamas and then suddenly she's like, I'm going to be in the country. And I'm like, are you going to be able to get back out? But she's here now, so we'll see how it goes. Right. I, back out. I said, look over there. And then I flew. Do you think you'll be able to make it back in? Yes, I did. You have to do a COVID, um, COVID test. And um, it's free out here in Nevada. So we made our appointment. We got it back a lot sooner than we thought. They said it was going to take like a week. And then we got uh -huh. it back um, online the next day or so. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm cleared to go back. And that's how you get back in. But it kind of seems questionable because you did the COVID test like a couple days ago. And in between like now and then, if you're not like 100% quarantining, i.e. she's not, mm -hmm. then, hey, don't put my business on blast. You're in front of the world. You're literally here with me. But I could have been like teleported or something. We could do this like- This is definitely that. not social distancing either. No, there's like six inches between us. There's definitely not six feet. I have been- <laughs> <laughs> it's safe. It's just take my word for it. Okay, totally. So, well, I mean, that's actually really good because that leads me in. I was reading an article about countries that are like either opening their countries back up for travel and tourism and those that are not. And some of the rules I was reading, it's, it's going to be reciprocal. If your country did mm -hmm. not take um, their, pre like the precautions and really actually uh, take COVID seriously, they don't want you to come in. For instance, Italy is saying they don't want Americans to come in because of how poorly they feel we handled, or our president and the rest of the nation handled this crisis and pandemic. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, that's going to really be rough. Do you, is the Bahamas like that? So Bahamas, I'm sure they're doing um, a reciprocal thing like that because they're really using this opportunity to clean house and restructure their, um, their travel industry and restructure their whole like government thing. So I'm, I'm sure they are. I'd have to verify, but I'm sure that they are. Why wouldn't they? I mean, like, I would think everybody, like in the article exactly. they said, Germany is ready to open up. Um, but just border crossings with some of their neighbors, like Austria, Switzerland, and France. Mm -hmm. um, and Europe, yeah. They'll also allow inter-EU travel. So that makes sense because at this point, they are like the U.S., everybody in the EU. So what but do you, you think have, that means for like London now? Or like just generally England? Oh man, they're, they're, they're a little country again. <laughs> I don't know. Brexit. Like kill so your ass across the channel. You're not, you're not with us anymore basically they're they're not part of them anymore so what can they do you know i don't i mean london no yeah they're gonna be like the redheaded stepchild for quite some time i believe because they're still not they were still like mixed up with trying to figure out whole the whole brexit situation right and then right. like covid happened so now they're really gonna be on a literal island by <laughs> themselves I mean, I will say that, like, for Kuwait, so today is, like, day 74 of, like, full quarantine for us, and um, for the month of March, we basically went into a full 24-hour curfew lockdown. We had two hours that we were able to walk outside, so between 4.30 in the afternoon and 6.30 in the afternoon, you can go outside and walk, but you have to stay in your neighborhood, and you're not really supposed to drive. If you wanted to go to the grocery store, you had to apply for a pass to go to the grocery store. Then you received a QR code that you could scan because they had checkpoints on the highway and you had to scan it in order to go into the grocery store. If you didn't have one, you weren't going into the grocery store. They take your temperature, you have to have a mask, you have to wear gloves. I mean, everywhere here is like basically implemented. The infrared screenings for your temperature. So, uh, today is actually the last day of Eid, so for all of our Muslims, Eid Mubarak. Um, but they are, tomorrow, I think we're going back to a, still a partial curfew. So it starts at 1700, 5 p.m., you have to be in the house. And then it'll lift at 06 in the morning. 
and they're starting to open up like services. Malls are going to open back up, restaurants. Everything is a phased implementation. I still can't fly out the country. I couldn't pull it beyond May, but. So for the month of May, you've been in literal prison with only two hours of like yard time? Right. Yeah, that's what we all call it. It's our yard time. Yard time time being stand at the window. This is... (laughs) <laughs> this is how you get your, your daylight hours in. Stand at the window. All right, now back up. Put your cur- curtains down. Right. And, like, we live in, like, uh, villas, like, big buildings. So I used to go up to the rooftop just to be outside during, like, nighttime just to get fresh air because uh, my apartment doesn't have a balcony. And it's just like, oh, my God. So it's, a, it's, it's like, I want to say it's good and it's bad because of this. I haven't had to go into work. I've been able to work remotely, and that is amazing. For how long? Because I feel like we were talking about it and for weeks on end, we're going to go into lockdown. Not yet. We're going to go into I'm work from home. Not yet. Just kidding. Tomorrow. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. So how um, long? We started. Take? So the full lockdown, the full lockdown started May 4th and it ends May 31st. Okay. Hmm. And then June we'll start seeing. But I mean, they brought back a lot of, they repatriated. 35,000 Kuwaiti citizens. So our numbers, they were relatively low, but as you introduce new people, the numbers just start rising. They seem to be going down now. They feel like they're flattening the curve. But we have like four neighborhoods that are gonna stay on a 24 hour curfew. You cannot leave this neighborhood if you live there. So I I don't- Because of the numbers? Yes, it's like like living in district nine. They won't let you out. So with that, like, if you're in that neighborhood, you can leave your house and walk around the neighborhood. You just can't leave the neighborhood? Exactly. Okay, so it's like you really are in prison, but you have a bigger yard. <laughs> exactly. That's really it, right? That's, you can't, because you can't go out. So everything has to be done in that area. I mean, the, mm. food, the restaurant, like, all of, they said the grocery stores ran out of food because they weren't able to bring in food. We were dropping food over the fence. So one of the guys I work with, he got mail. And when um, the guy brought it to him, he was like, I'm not stopping at the gate because they switched out the police for the National Guard. And the National Guard are a bit different. They're not like kind. So when he was driving by, I'm gonna send you this video. I have to send this video. He drove by and he was like, he said, oh, there's Dre with my mail. And then Dre just threw his mail out the window and kept driving me. Oh, snaps. In a bundle, Cause, hopefully. Because they keep, they put barricades up. We ha- they literally have, oh. like, barricades around the entire neighborhood, zip tied together to make sure you don't ha- go in and out. And then they have police or the National Guard stationed at, like, entrances and just to walk up and down and make sure nobody's sneaking out. That is so crazy. That's, like, really some shit you see in a movie mm-hmm. or, like, some TV show. And you're like, this can't be, this would never happen, like, for real. But... Like, uh, what was that? Handmaid's Tale is about to really take <laughs> place in those four neighborhoods. <laughs> I hope you don't live there. Right. And so, so now you're not you have in one like, of those neighborhoods, though. No, I'm not. No, I live more in a residential suburban type of area. Oh, so are those like the hood neighborhoods or are those like nice neighborhoods? Um, they're like highly densely populated, expatriate kind of more of like the working force neighborhoods ah okay (laughs) yeah that's unfortunate so that's what they're doing for their working class so if you're not like a live-in um housekeeper nanny etc you're basically like just screwed yeah basically so i guess that means that they can't go to work are they like waiving rent there because i know in like nevada right now you can't evict someone and you can't well, generally, you just can't evict them or, um, what is it? I want to say repo a house, but you can't repo a house. What is it? Foreclose. Fore- Thank fore- you. You're welcome. <laughs> she was no help. I was like, she just sat give me a word. Give me a letter. Anyway, we, we were getting there. <laughs> anyway, so I know you can't do that here. Is that, like, a thing there? Or are they about to put people out? Like, you're still in this neighborhood. You just can't be in this house. Um, I mean, like, what are they gonna put you out? Where are you gonna go? I don't know. They, they, it's, it's up to them. I mean, the, I will say the Kuwait government has been amazing in like, yeah. they've basically they waived all personal loans, credit card payments, mortgages for the next six months. So anybody that was banking, you know, with them and had a loan through them, they just waived those. 
Now, whether or not that trickled down to like us, that's based on the owner and what he wants to do. But mm. I, I could tell you my landlord, it did not trickle it. I've asked. I was like, so, you know, this pandemic, right? Rent? He's like, yeah, you're going to be able to have that on the third? I was like, bro, <laughs> really? But, but really, do you need it like at all? He said, darn the pandemic. No, he takes his money. He still wants his, his dollars. So they yeah. like they're saying you don't have to pay it at all. Not you have you don't have to pay it right now, but pay it later. They waived it all together. They waived it all together for six months. Not they didn't even put it on the back end. They just waived it mm. and the interest. They're not even charging them the interest. Wow. wow. Right. Um, wow. Amazed. I mean, so do you really want to leave though? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not tired. Yes, you Yeah. <laughs> She's I, like, I'm I mean, paying my bills. <laughs> ask him next month and see what he says. Just. Keep going for the whole six months. Maybe the last month he'll just tell you keep your keep your keep your dollars. Keep I'm gonna I'm actually gonna ask. I'm gonna ask. Um, this is a 20, what, 26. Yeah, I'm gonna ask again because I'm 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 wanting it. But I mean, they they even like all the people they brought back, all their citizens. It was free. They didn't even charge them to come back. They paid for all their plane tickets. They sent wow. like aircraft out there and brought them back for free. Man, that is caring. Sharing is caring. Man, yeah. And we had to charter a flight to get out. What? We had to charter a flight to uh, oh. fly into um, Fort Lauderdale. And then we drove into Orlando. We drove up to Orlando. Because oh, wow. it would have been another $1,000, I think, to get to, or for them to fly to Orlando. It's just one of those little one-seater, like one seat on each side, little aircraft a little puddle jumper basically and uh we got into florida and that's how i mean jet blue i think is flying and they're doing two one or two flights per week but mm -hmm. um we left like on a monday and they didn't have a flight until thursday so it was like if you want to get out you're basically chartering this flight and the ticket were i can't even remember how much it was for jet blue it was just crazy it was it was madness I definitely wouldn't try non revving on that because I don't know how many people there are like U.S. citizens are trying to, you know, get out if they even knew that was a thing because I didn't think there was a way to go until the government was like, okay, we're opening the airport back up. Mm -hmm. We flew out of the private air, um, airport. I thought they were still doing rescue flights for like U.S. citizens. I think that's the JetBlue one, but I don't. But the government, U.S. government, do you have to sign up it? through the embassy because that's how it is here. You have to sign up. Well, Qatar Airways is actually flying, but um, one way ticket back home is costing you on Qatar Airways is, and that's they're they're like the only ones flying, mm -hmm. almost twenty eight hundred dollars one way for economy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds for about economy. right. That's that's insane. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We need to get you a shirt, Misty, that says, do I look like I fly economy? Every time I see that pop up on, like, my Facebook, I think of you. <laughs> For $2,700, I do fly economy. I'm, I'm right there with it. If, hopefully, they'll let me upgrade with my points. You're like, just go ahead and throw me in cargo. I'm good. So, with the lockdown. But this has been date, amazing. Like, mm -hmm. This has been amazing as far as savings. There's nothing to spend your money on. Is there? Oh, you know what? Because you don't have Amazon. <laughs> No. This has not been amazing for savings because Amazon delivery, like, Man. they are on it. And I feel so terrible ordering from them. Because have you seen those things where they talk about, like, you're endangering people's lives by ordering, like, stuff you don't need because they're only open because they need to be essential? Wow. I was like, man, I really wanted that travel bag. And I did order it. And obviously, that's not essential. I oh genuinely hope I didn't kill someone with my bag. Well, you kept them able to pay their bills. That is true. And that's been the nice thing about continuing to work through this is that I haven't had like that bit of fear. Right. Cause I can't, even, that, that has to really shake you to your core to be like, oh my God, how am I going to survive? Like you hear about it, but living it is a completely different thing. So yeah. Now there's that. Far lower stakes fear, kind of going back to your article, <laughs> is what country is going to let me in when we finally can travel again? Because my bag is packed. Let me oh. go somewhere. 
I'm not sure. You definitely don't want to go to Brazil. They're like mass graves throwing people in it. Like, I think the world's going to cut them off. And we were going to go there this year, actually. Oh, were you? Yep. For Joshua's birthday. Guess what we did Oh, know? man. She was going to go there. They said Corona's you know like running know? around there. State secrets. <laughs> Listen, y'all have to run tell all your business. <laughs> <laughs> not all of it <laughs> who are you hiding from it's us i don't know yet but d isn't it better to be safe than sorry i meant tell oh. your sisters i didn't know about brazil <laughs> oh cause... i don't know you know i want to do indonesia like i really want to try to go not to bali necessarily because mm -hmm. but i want to try indonesia and then i really want us to like backpack or a couple like two three countries through south america would be really dope that is on my bucket. Like I was thinking about my roadmap for 2020 and I think it's dead, but 2021. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Might as well just save it to 2022 to be safe. Yeah. I just, I, so when you, so when you're looking up which countries are opening their borders, are, do they have a list like of like criteria that you have to meet to get in there? Not just yeah. from like a country to country perspective, but like the traveler what is what Probably, is that initial wave gonna look like so my friend tracy is moving to germany and when, because she's coming in on a business visa a work visa they're allowing her to come into the country and then she can go to her company's accommodations or hotel she wanted to bring her mom with her and because her mom would be coming as a tourist mm -hmm. she has to go into a 14-day quarantine in a hotel um and then be cleared, even if she's flying with a letter. So I think some countries are requiring you to have medical clearance. I know in Kuwait, they're clearing you at the airport upon exit, telling you that you do not have COVID when you leave here. And they, you have to show up to the airport four hours early now. And then when you come in, they're testing mm -hmm. you upon arrival. So I think, and then you go into a 14 day um, quarantine and they give you a RFID tag bracelet to track your they movements. track where you're going. Exactly. I've heard that that was going to be a thing now. And so wow. I have been kind of like, you hear all those conspiracy theories about like, this is all to like take away our freedoms. And a part of me is like, is it though? And then when you hear stuff like that, and I'm not going to say I get into those because I don't, I genuinely believe that people are honestly sick and dying and we need to do what we can to protect them. But you hear some of those crazy things and you're like, Will the world ever be the same? Or are we going into a state where we're just more trackable? Granted, that's the invention of cameras did it already. So exactly. Time moves forward. I mean, it was I think it's inevitable and it's just pushed it so that it's not gonna be what it was. It's it's like 9-11. It changed the way we actually fly, mm -hmm. our searching mechanisms. Like people used to go to the gate and now that's that died in 2001. So Oh, but did you hear TSA is now letting you take 12 ounces of uh, sanitizer with you? That's the only thing you can bring over three ounces other than like medical liquids. I did not hear that. But where, like you go to stores, where are you finding the sanitizer? Hold up, 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven's coming up in the world. <laughs> they, I went to a 7-Eleven. Are they making their own though? Because you know that story. Oh, I don't know that story, but we'll get to it so it they just had like rows of sanitizer then toilet paper and then cases of water under a sign that said god bless america i was like well that's oh. that's a statement so i mean i hand said i i have some aloe vera gel um i have mm -hmm. some lavender essential oil and what was the other thing i needed oh the isopropyl uh oh isopropyl alcohol yeah, I make my own. I mean, you know, I actually don't need to make that. my own. I've been in my but own house. It's only good for like 14 for, days. But it's only good for 14 days. Yeah. I think someone told me when you make your own, it, it has like an expiration. And this is like, this is day 15 for me. So you use that. I mean, I don't understand how, how does it go bad? Tell me, tell me how the alcohol goes bad. I don't, I don't know, know, it just stops working. It dehydrates the uh, chemical property in it that is killing the germs uh, dies. I don't know. I just read it somewhere. I don't even know if it was a reputable source, but it's what I heard. <laughs> I call bullshit. Bullshit. They just want you to keep purchasing that stuff. No, 
This is I would true. Be like, if you are listening and you happen to know why it would go bad in 14 days, please let us know. Please. And when I say let us know, let Miss D know why she's not cleaning anything. No! You comment <laughs> Why below the germs are still alive and tap dancing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, fine. I mean, COVID's now yeah. Bojangles over in Misty's uh, house. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so let's go into uh, game time of our Zoom okay. episode. Uh, I picked up Would You Rather. Have you guys mm -hmm. ever played that? Yes. All right. I'm so sure we're, I have. We're, we're going to ping back and forth. I asked Lexi one question, Diambi one question. You'll say yeah. yes or, you know. Which you answer, and then, you know, if your spirit says, I should expound on why, you should expound. <laughs> All right. Lexi, are All you right. ready? I think so. Ready. Okay. Ready. Bring it. Would you rather get food poisoning during your trip or bring back bed bugs? Food poisoning. Way better. Okay. I mean, I've gotten food yeah. poisoning, and do you remember we were in Thailand together, and I, you know, it wasn't food poisoning. I was dehydrated, which we've talked about. This has happened on a few vacations, but when I dehydrate, I just start vomiting. Like, I can't stop, and so um, we were eating something. We were eat in Thailand eating some food, and I'm like, yeah, this is not agreeing with me, and so then we were going to a drag show after, and so after dinner, to the bathroom and threw up. We got to the I went to the bathroom and threw up. Had a great time at the drag show. Went back to the hotel, threw up again. I just kept on. Like, I carried on. The next day we woke up, I drank some water, and we got massages. So, so you sure you don't want bed bugs? Food. Yeah, definitely food poisoning. Okay. Diamond. Bed bugs sound terrible, it's, especially if you're bringing them to your home. Exactly. That's what I would, like, if food poisoning, the degree, that would be the thing. Like, how sick are you? If you've gotten it before, you kind of know how your body may react. It's a basic question. Moving on. Okay. Okay. Would you rather randomly time travel 20 plus years every time you fart or teleport to a different place on earth, on land, not water, every time you sneeze? <laughs> um, that, okay, so very detailed question. So every time I fart, I teleport 20 years, so I just... Older? Time travel 20 years. Time travel 20 years. So I get, I just age or do I come you, back? You come back, um, you go back and forth. And, and then if I sneak, I'm going to somewhere else on land. Yes, and you have to make it back to your original destination. It feels like you I'm gonna, age though. It feels like you'd stay the same age and slowly get older, like the time traveler's wife. Right. Okay. So then I'm gonna go with the first one, the the farting one, because uh, I'm pretty good about that. And <laughs> you're human. Well, no, I'm not saying that I don't, <laughs> but like you know, it's not like I'm not generally a super gassy person. I know the things that do make me gassy, so I like time it like appropriately. So I feel like I could use that to my advantage. I'm gonna go the the fart time traveling. Really? Okay. I thought that one was obvious. The sneeze end up somewhere else on land. Why would you? Why? Why? Imagine how many places you get to see in the world during allergy season. But imagine the things that you get to <laughs> learn about yourself or about the world to use for current situations because you get to come back and you don't okay, age. That butterfly much? effect. You're about to ruin the world. Just. Just over a All right, middle. Lexi. Miss, would which you one would you choose of those two? Since we're since we're uh, split on this, I just want to know. I sneeze. Yeah, I thought so. I did okay, Lexi. Lexi, would you rather spend the night in a luxury hotel with a stranger or in a dodgy hostel with your best friend? How dodgy is the hostel? Like <laughs> dodgy, like proper, like in a really bad neighborhood. Um, it's like when we were in Managua and the fence kept getting rammed by the protesters slash rebels and they were going to like take you hostage. Ooh. I mean, how dodgy is a stranger? It's just like strangers. It's just an unknown. Is it a female or a male? It's a, it's a, it's a binary. Okay. Non gender neutral individual. Boom. She gotcha. I actually feel like I would go with the stranger then. Mm -hmm. They, I feel like people that are non-binary tend to be just like much more, um, 
I don't know, progressive in their beliefs. I've, I mean, granted, I don't know if I've met a serial killer, but I definitely don't think a gender neutral serial killer. So I think that's going to be my option. Plus it's a nice hotel. Okay. Do you, like, don't they say like every five years, everyone's met like at least 12 serial killers in their lifetime or something. You just didn't know because person wasn't I mean, kill you. They haven't murdered me. So yeah. We're good. I mean, I have a pretty uh, good track record of not getting murdered. Well, Diabe, would you rather live without the internet or live without AC and heating? Mm. Live without the internet or AC and heating? Uh, internet. Okay. I don't even know her. Who is this person? I can't get cold. I am such a heifer. What I am, <laughs> you do not want to be around me when I'm cold. When I'm hot, like, I can deal. Like, the internet, like, if I'm going places, when I'm on vacation, I'm not on my phone. Aside from like wanting to Google the random fact, like I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on Instagram. You guys already talked about how the whole conspiracy that I don't post pictures. So yeah. Okay, so I'll ask both of you guys this question. Would you rather spend the night in a Turkish prison or get 25 lashes on the soles of your feet? Turkish prison. I mean, oh no, that was a Thai prison palace um i don't want like a roach to crawl in my ear but if it's just a night i think i can stay awake like are they doing anything okay unusual so which one are you prison? choosing okay i'm guessing like without knowing the details about the turkish prisons i'm gonna say the prison okay would you rather lose your sight or your vision um your, your, vision, or your vision or your hearing i'm sorry oh okay <laughs> oh my hearing for sure hearing yeah all right would you Rather be stuck, uh, last one, would you rather be stuck on a broken ski lift or in a broken elevator? And they're both 100 feet up. I mean, the ski lift probably has really good views. Um, and okay. if you die, it's at least uh, fresh air. Are they enclosed? Are the ski lift, is that like the little chair one or are you talking about like an enclosed one? We'll go with they're both enclosed. Uh, I guess ski lift, it still has a better view. Um, Bay. Oh God, elevator because I think an elevator is going to be in a building, and there are there's like a solid structure for me to possibly make an attempt to escape. But if I try to escape out of the ski lift, I'm doomed. I do not like heights like that, mm -hmm. where it's based on my balance, and I feel like I would I would die because I would be shaking so much that I wouldn't be able to like keep calm enough to. to escape what is with you in heights okay so just one more question i know it's the last one but if you're on the ski lift is there a time limit on how long you're going to be up there i mean it's gonna both exactly. of them are dropping out the sky and you're gonna death you're gonna die in the exam oh yeah. so it is it is gonna go to death <laughs> does it matter it does because if you're to live i would maybe do an elevator because at some point you got to go to the bathroom and that ski lift is probably really open and you assume that someone's either behind you or in front of you <laughs> and you don't want to have to do that now if you're on an elevator, the logic at least have some privacy. It, would you rather okay that is uh it for this episode <laughs> we thank <laughs> you let us know what you would rather if you'd rather be on stuck in an elevator or stuck in a ski lift comment below thank you for joining today's special episode quarantine edition zoom of flirting with travel podcast bye, bye. bye.